Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, January the 9th, 2019. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button button, and also the ring the bell so you can get our future updates. And I'm going to turn this right over to Miss Vegas. Okay, well, hello everyone. What an interesting day today. You know, it was kind of an interesting morning and uh, oil did a good uh thing today moved up quite well and as a result we saw some action on uh, SAEX which we will be talking about we'll be talking about SLS NBEV KNDI and UXIN so let's first talk about SAEX well I gotta tell you a lot of people like I've mentioned in a previous video a while back bag holding the stock um, you know this actually would have probably been a really strong buy when it was under two dollars i recall someone had messaged me a while back just before christmas um and asked you know what do you think of the chart and i said i wouldn't touch it and you know the reason was because the day that he asked i mean i think the person was thinking to swing trade the stock but it was in the i think at the time like in the 220s and um you know what how do you bought the stock at that time the stock actually pulled back like 35 cents so based on his inquiry that day that was the right answer to give him um however when this did pull back below two dollars that was probably a good opportunity and i'm sure there's probably people that did uh probably take advantage of that but it had a nice run today so i'm gonna let jim talk about it because the low of the day was two dollars and thirty cents so Let's hear all about it, Jim, on SAEX and running after hours, too. Yep, there's the website of SAEX. I'm going to pull up the yearly chart first. We had some pretty good highs up here. It's been on downhill climb. Had a pretty hard sell-off right here. So we hit that low of 182, and then right after hours, we popped up. And we're bouncing around at 410 right now. So I'm going to pull up the 20-day. Uh, you see how we, well, let's see if I'm going to pull up three month here. Now it just kind of ran down and just kept going down, 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 down. And here we are at, at the 372 level at close. So after hours, we called this right out of the morning when we had the golden cross here. And it bounced. I said, this is going to be a good one today. And then we had the big old jump on it this morning. And then it really took off. Bounced up to about 406, and then it pulled back and hit that 50 SMA. And as it started going up, it climbed up and broke out again, busted past that 406 to a new level of 422, which was on my extended trend lines. And what was neat about this stock, I called the pullback on it to the 200 SMA right here. You can see the 50 started to cross down, and then it went ahead and followed that up and hit that 100. Once it hit that 100, it consolidated and pulled back down and went under. Then it hit that support level. So I called this little channel in here in the room. It's at 323, pivot point around 337 to 350. Well, it never did go on down. It just went ahead and kept on bouncing up to that 350 from that 337. And then it finally dipped on down to that 323. See right there? So it started playing the lower half of that channel, which was a pivot point around 337 and then all of a sudden it dipped down to my low support that I had here I drawed from this line right here where it had hit that 50 SMA that's where I went ahead and drawn that line and then later on in the evening we touched had a double bottom right there which is a confirmation for it to bounce up as it started doing that the 50 SMA started moving up up over the 100 and over the 200 create another golden cross after hours then right after hours, it popped up from 350, and one of the ladies in the room said, I said, what, when did you get in that at? And she said, oh, I got in at 310. And I said, you must have been listening to me. And it ran all the way back up to that 422 after hours. So I was really tickled that she got in that play. And then here after hours, we touched the 50, and it's kind of hovering around 414. Now, we just want you to be a little cautious with this stock, and uh, but the trade was just a real easy call today and I'm gonna pull up the 10 the 10 day just to have one little final say about it here we go I mean we're, we broke out today and we hit a double top we had three white soldiers here after hours on a 30 minute 
and we're at 414 right now after hours if it pulls back you could look for 372 support and I'd like to see that hold if that doesn't hold it's going to go down farther but let's see what happens when we get in the room tomorrow we want it to break the 422 area and that's SAEX and the next one Vegas alerted today and that's SLS go ahead yeah, so uh, SLS um, that one there. We we you know kind of had this at one time and then got stopped out um, just because you know got to honor your stop losses. Um, but SLS here, I did notice here that there was some news, but that news wasn't from today. This news actually was from yesterday, and I guess based on the chart too. Uh, definitely looked like the stock was going to start crossing the 50-day, and then that attracted uh, probably some technical traders. But they did mention yesterday that, um, you know, they've I, and I think I already talked about this yesterday, that they achieved all their milestones since they became a public company. Like I did mention SLS yesterday. So um, I did mention yesterday that this was probably going to have a continuation today. And you know what? Those of you that did take the idea, and remember to probably look at the chart today and look to trade it, uh, did well. So SLS performed as per uh, yesterday's video commentary. They have they have a pretty good little pipeline here too, I'm looking at. Yeah. Real interesting sure. pipeline. And they've got a lot of things going on, going projects going on. Uh, FDA approved here with the, pro, with the phase three on two of them. So this could be a... This could be something that you want to keep on watch, definitely. So I'm going to pull up the year's chart on it. We had a real, I mean, every like every stock this year, it pulled back. Last year in 2018, we had a low of 80 cents. It bounced on up into this little channel here and pulled on back. I know this is kind of fuzzy right here, but I'm just letting you know that we had an 80 bottom. Then it kind of hit a resistance around two bucks, pulled back to the low support of 112, and here we are today at 166 after hours, where it closed at. I'm going to pull up the 20 day, look at it real sweet. Here we hit that 113 low, and I do love that number 113, 115, but I'm looking at a 118 support right here. And I'm going to go ahead and draw that in here real fast, so I'll have it here. 117 looks good to me it's bounced on up it's had about a two-week run and then today it had the breakout we could probably chase it up to about 174 but what I'd like to see is another pullback here maybe tomorrow about midway to 150 and I'm gonna go ahead and make make that 150 my pivot point which is gonna be a support you see how it hit the high there and pulled back so let's see if we can get this back down to that 150 area if it gets down there, you might have you a good little bargain for 10, 15 cent scalp. And maybe something that you want to keep on a core position. Do your homework, read up on the on the charts, read up on the uh, fundamentals of it, and you take it from there. This is SLS, and I'm liking it right now. I think we're due for a pullback to 150. CGC. All right. Well, looks like marijuana stocks are back. Yep. So, I mean, there's no news for me to report on CGC or NBEV, as a matter of fact. Um, but I will turn it over to you, just talk about these charts, because uh, obviously the pot plays are heating up again. Saw some phenomenal action on CGC. I think there's a great opportunity here for swing trade or option calls. And uh, I think with NBEV, uh, same thing, because what I noticed on NBEV is that it's been coiling for quite some time. And it looks like it's making a new channel. But I'm going to turn it over to you to talk about those two beautiful charts. Well, you know how I am. I'm, I love I love it, this sector most of all. It's one of my favorite sectors right now. And we ran it for about two or three months. And it kind of pulled back at the end of the year. I'm thinking CGC is, and along with Cron and along with NBEV, are going to be probably my top three Antillery, T-L-R-Y, are going to be my top four stocks, and I'll repeat them one more time. CGC, InBev, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Cron, which has had its breakout and still working on it. Big, big thing with Cron. And Tillery, which is I think is a high dollar stock, but I'm going to see it get back to 100. 
So I'm going to pull up the CGC, CGC, <laughs> CGC chart. It's just like I said it. Could say it any clearer. We called this in the room right around twenty six dollars, twenty five seventy five, twenty six twenty two. I'm telling the room we had a triple bottom with a low of twenty five eleven. This is going to be a buy. You're going to take it to thirty three, and look what happened today, thirty three seventy five. And this is what I told the room. I said, hey, don't be surprised if this gets to twenty thirty three in a matter of a couple of weeks, maybe sooner, because I'm very bullish in the year of two thousand nineteen on on the market and on China too. I think we're going to have a little 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 rebound in China this year. So prepare your watch list. So we're gonna, I've got a target on this thing to forty bucks to forty five. I'm going to pull up a three month chart just to show you what I'm looking at. We had a high of sixty dollars almost right here, and ever since then we had a pullback to right where we are right now, which is a, a, to me a pivot point on this chart. Which is a was a support because it bounced on up here to 46.32, so I've got I think we can run up and hit this moving average of 39 to 40 bucks in a matter of a week, maybe two weeks. Any kind of pullback will be healthy on this stock. This is a wonderful trade. There's a beautiful call down there at 26, and the next one and Cron and keep Tillery on watch T L R Y and Cron. And Vegas wants to discuss InBev. That'll be the next one we're going to talk about, InBev. Yeah, so I just, I mean, all I wanted to just mention, I, which I said, um, you know, to everyone that likes InBev and has been watching this chart, I mean, I've, we've been following this very closely, um, definitely have to say that um, InBev's been coiling, and it looks like it's finally going to start um, coming into a new channel. But, uh, Jim, what are your thoughts about that um, analysis of the chart? I'm, I've been going through the product line on InBev here, and they just keep okay. scrolling down, and it never stops. And I definitely want to order me some of these products for a little bit. Healthy living, and that's what I believe in. Healthy living, what you put in your body is how you treat your body, is how, how healthy you can be. And that's been one of my lifetime thingamajiggers so InBev we've had this little channel and we'll pull up the 20 day and we've been bullish on this for what six months now yeah. something like that where's the three month here oh I do have it on three months let's go look at the 20 day so we had this nice little breakout to about seven bucks it pulled back and hit my little support which was right around six five sixty bounced on back up had to triple top now we had a real hard sell-off that when we when the market sold off there at the last of December, and it and I, and we were calling it in the room under five bucks is a strong buy. Well, from that five bucks, we bounced up. I had a resistance here at five sixty one, and my other resistance was right around six oh seven. But we needed to break this five sixty one to really amount to anything, and you can see the ascending wedge as it goes up the trail here perfect little trend line I mean a little bumpy ride but this is just an opportunity the stock that likes to pull back a little bit and then likes to retrace a new high so we broke out of that channel which was very important to me today and that was at 562 after it broke it we ran on all the way up to six bucks and you see right here on this line where that resistance is which was an old support see how it made that 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 V and then had the hard sell-off, so that became a resistance right there. So maybe a pullback is healthy for this to at least 588. I'd like to see it start a new channel. I'd like to see it start a new channel and then carry up. I'm not saying it's going to be a monster breakout, but I am saying this is one that you can scalp and swing at the same time with a small core position. And that's InBev. So okay, we're and as we're talking, i just mentioning here, looks like SAEX is breakout uh oh the high of day today was at 4 30 and we're Look. just tapping 4 30 and looking for the break this oh, is a live my. commentary live. <laughs> so we had a double top um, right we there, did Vegas. talk about this today and this, this is a triple top yeah this four, is right this is the third one yep yep there was one just uh 
sh just shy after hours. And then there's one earlier this morning before 12 noon. There was an, uh, it hit 430. So this is a triple top where it's hit 430 three times. So if it doesn't break this triple top, it can pull back a little bit. I'm yes. looking at maybe the 407 or maybe here around the 372 era area. Ooh, I think I mentioned wow. that 372 earlier. You did. So, yeah. and that's, these are, these are the, I'm going to repeat those four pot stock tickers. And then we got a, a special, we got another one we're going to talk about. And then we got a bonus, the CGC, InBev, Cron, and Tillery, T-L-R-Y are my four favorite ones. The next one, Vegas, is, is a car company. Yes. So, uh, KND, um, I was going to say Y, but I, because I'm busy watching SAEX at the same time. So, um, KND, I, that company there. Let me just pull it up here. So, they did have news. So, you know, they did have the news today that um, they, the company um, has a joint venture with Candy Vehicles, Geely Group, and uh, each company obviously owns 50%. They also did mention um, <clears throat> that, uh, you know, remember, I, I think I mentioned this too, about the uh, Vehicle Cleanup Regulations Act 2017. So um, they're going to be uh, working on the investment project, which was suspended, which actually had impacted their operations at one time until the auto regulation was issued afterwards to replace the original announcement. Uh, anyhow, so the company uh, did actually have good news. They got the approval. It comes out to about $14.5 million um, to proceed. So that's great news for the company. And uh, we can see probably some more um, action probably on this stock as we start to see that it's in a nice, nice Channel. And I really still like, um, when I looked at the chart actually today, I was actually liking it even for a continuation. Um, so, Jim, what do you think? Because it did look to me that the stock was overbought, um, but I think it's got some good support now here yep. uh, for potential continuation. Um, but certainly, I'd like you to comment on that. Uh, sexy chart there actually yeah i seen a little pattern when it gets overbought we had this overbought back in uh september where it just ran up real hard and then pulled back a little bit and then continued on up about five or six days later so we kind of have the same kind of candle forming right now as i see right here that this situation right here with the three white soldiers on a daily then it pulls back and then we had another three white soldiers then it pulls back and then today it's just been solid green lineup here in the last week and a half. So like like she said, it can pull back a little bit, maybe around 510. But um, one thing that I also want to bring up, that the, the last month of the year in December, China wanting to crack down on a lot of putting regulations on gasoline cars. And I think this might have helped the little boost on this this company here, along with NIO. So keep this is like a sister to NIO right now, NIO, and it started to move a little bit today too, and it's at the resistance that I had. And I'm just going to mention that real fast. Let me pull up the daily chart on this, and I'll speak of NIO just for a second. But here we come out of the gate. We had the golden cross right after, right in the morning, first thing, the 50 on the daily one minute. It ran up and it just kept buffing up against that 50 all the way up. Every time it hit the 50, it bounced up. And then we had a little tightening of the 50 and the 100. Kind of consolidated a little bit. Then we had the big breakout again up to 563. Now, we pulled back into a little, to a little wedge, a little downward wedge, which is probably setting up for another breakout tomorrow. So I like to get this thing back up to 5, 6, 561. We had a high of 563. I don't want to see it pull back too much. If it does pull back, look at around 524 for a support level. I'll repeat that 524 for a support level on KNDI for a retracement back up. I like to see this wedge break out. And then, just for a second, I'm going to show you in the Nile chart. Oh, my, sorry. Uh, SAEX is ripping 463. <laughs> uh oh. I know. 
Your bag is going to be happy on this one. Yeah, I know. It's going to be, oh, we'll see about that. Yep. So we're up, I mean, one of the girls in the room got in here at 310, and I know she's jumping for joy. She sold, she sold already. Did she? <laughs> I mentioned she sold, yeah. Well, she, she did well then. She did very she did good. great. Yeah. Okay, so we were going to talk about Nile again. I'm going to bring up Nile real fast. We're off the fly here, so anything can happen when you're hanging out with Vegas and Jim on the aftermarket report. So we had a low yesterday in Nile here at 616. They're at my little resistance level. And I had this 660. I'm going to pull up a 20 day, show you what I'm looking at, make it real fast here. I've been playing this channel here. I called this triple bottom down here at 58592. 592. And I said, it's time to buy this sucker. And it ran all the way up to my 660 resistance, that I had, which was a previous uh, consolidated period. Pulled back again to that $6 level, which I told everybody in the room, load up. Hit that 660 again, pulled back to the 618, and then here we are back at the 660 with a with a it looks to me like maybe a, a a pennant flag getting ready to break out to go higher. If not, it can pull back a little bit to this 50 SMA, and I'm going to pull that up on a daily because that's where I kind of pull that where I call that off of. So yeah, I say the pullback would be right around 650 if it if I wanted to pull back any at all. But I want to see this thing to break out. I really want to see it start to move in 2019. I want to see it get at least 100% out of it. So the last one, the bonus play of the day, is one that Vegas and I called at a very bottom at one time. Vegas, you want anything to say about it? Actually, you know what? You might want to talk about DCIX. I'm just watching it run, too. Uh-oh. On uh, Diana Container Ships. Maybe you want to check that quickly. Uh, I know. I throw you off. BCIX. We had tops run yesterday from 85 cents all the way up to 130. And we had a dries. We were talking about dries. And here we are talking about DCIX right now after hours. Ran from 80 cents all the way up to 122. And I've already got this charted up, so I don't need to do any homework on it. I'm going to pull up the 20 day. Oh my, look at that. If anybody's in this stock, take your profit now, please. Oh my God, really? Yep. <laughs> if you got well, in it down here at eighty cents, that's a forty. That's a forty cent bounce. Yeah, if they got in, sure. But I'm probably people seeing this now running, and they're going, "Oh, I might trade it." But I don't know. Uh, to each their own. That's right. Everyone has different trading styles and strategies. But we're way no, past not the gap. Every, no one trader is the same. No. Everyone's different. This is a three-month chart. So, you know, mm -hmm. when you're up 40 cents on a penny stock, I'm taking profit. Or I'm going to scale out. Because this 111 was the hard resistance. And you got we're up here now at the 130 level, 122 level, which we can bounce up a little bit more to maybe 131. But, you know, I, I just, Yeah. Good caller, Miss Vegas. And the last one we're going to talk about, and no more, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> there, no, I mean, it's you, like this all day long with us. Yes, we can hit one. I can trade. We can trade anything you, or I can, I can give you a call on any stock you give me. So, you got a crystal ball. I got so, a crystal ball. U X I N. It's another China play. Another. That's one of yours that you've been following and trading, and today it had a pullback. People traded it. Yep, and this is a wonderful company, but it cracked down. Like I said, that lock that that China is going to start cracking down on gasoline automobiles. So this one pulled back, but before they come out with that news, I'm going to show you what we did with this baby. We called this sucker down here at 281, Vegas and I did, and I said Vegas, I said we got a bottom here. Then all of a sudden that next day we had the big breakout, and the breakout went from 281 all the way up to 490 and I just was very there wasn't much running at this time at the end of the year everything else was going down but this thing was going up and I mean up and it ran from all the way from that place where we called it three bucks all the way up to almost hit 10 
and then we had a little V right here and then all of a sudden we had the hard sell off when that Chinese news came out so I'm still bullish on this stock again we, we called it in the room today at 319 and I said it's at least gonna go to 30 330 and if it goes past that 330 you might see 340 and then you can see that 350 area well I'm gonna pull up the daily chart and I got out of it by this time I was having a little bit of issues with with one of my platforms and just kind of threw me off and I don't like to trade when I've been thrown off but here we are we touched back down to so good about my trend lines it's just they just history repeats itself and and I just try to beat that down with everybody you know I don't like history to be stolen I like for it to repeat in life history always repeats itself and then there's always things that happen for the first time and it never stops so here we go we, we bounced off at 336 we hit that pivot point at 350 and then we hit the resistance at 365 and it ran all the way to 374 and I was asked in the room if I was gonna swing it and I said no I'm I'm gonna go ahead and scalp this sucker all the way up like I did before so we're, we're right now after hours we closed at 355 and after hours we're right around 357 right now so this is one to keep on watch this is the bonus stock that I really like I, I think I did good by calling at 319 today that that low it was mentioned in the room and when it was mentioned I was already on watching it I had it on my watch list every day just waiting for the opportunity and so here we are after hours 374 now we're at 357 and that's UXIN and right. then we'll leave the rest up to Vegas here, and then I'll do the closing. Anything you'd like okay. to talk about? Uh, no, I just want to mention that, uh, you know, we did a lot of scalping today on some of these stocks, especially like with SAEX because of the float being so low. And there were so many opportunities to trade this up and then make money on the way down and then again back on the way up. Uh, we also had a really good trade with high max option calls uh, people bought those yesterday for 10 to 15 cents and are doing quite well with the return on it um, I think they were up some people told me a hundred percent so that was great to hear based on their entry I think some people got in at 11 cents and they're up a hundred percent so that was good to help those with a smaller account and um, you know sometimes if you like to scalp I mean Chimps is a great scalper, so you're welcome to come check out the room, come by and visit. And um, also want to thank everyone that actually participated in the uh, webinar that was hosted by Patrick yesterday, Kiko. And I got really good feedback from so many people that really enjoyed his session. So what I'm going to do for the YouTube viewers that uh, maybe don't go on stock twits maybe you're not in our room that's fine um i will actually post yesterday's session which was recorded i will post it here in our information um and in the video description so in case you're interested to watch last night's session on how he explains um, what he looks for in charts and how he finds them um that would be a great uh, video to watch and uh, very informative He's so a, I will put that in our uh, information link below. That's what makes it good about hanging with him in Vegas. They're both the fundamentalists. The fundamentalists, they you know they they do the research, and he's real good at it, and he's real strict about it. And I mean, he's got a code that he goes by, code of conduct, where you know if it don't reach this criteria, he just pushes on, looks for the other one, and he finally finds the one play of the day, like I do. I like finding, but I'm a chartist guy. And I like to do the same thing. I like to find the pullbacks. I like to find, you know, the high volume with some kind of good news behind it. So it's a good match. Um, it'd be good for you to watch that because I learned a few things from him last night. I'm not the, the best at being a fundamentalist, but I'm learning. And it, there was one thing about this job and about teaching is we learn from everybody. So this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is January the 9th, 2019, and we love stocks. Vegas? Yeah. You I love stocks? Having a great night. Oh, I definitely love stocks. I think 
like love's not even the word it's almost like an obs like you know what it is i don't want to say obsession i have to just say it is a passion and it's so true what they say if you are passionate about something that you want to do that you want to pursue you don't even find that it's work and let me tell you this is why i love doing the since and i love talking on voice during the day because i enjoy um looking at charts i enjoy reading the information researching the company and i love um you know sharing commentary with people in the room you know everyone's a different trader and sometimes people have an opinion on something and sometimes we may not agree and that's okay that's what makes us unique traders you know not everyone's you're either 50 percent right or you're 50 percent wrong really if you think about it when you're trading something because you might want to go long on a stock and someone else wants to go short so it's gonna have to go either way right so it is 50 50. um so definitely uh great day with the room and appreciate everyone's feedback and thank you everyone for watching the videos. Really appreciate it. So please make sure to read the information in the information section under this video for that additional video in case you want to study and learn. Uh, it's great to hear Patrick speak. He's got unique techniques and I think that uh, some a lot of you might actually like his tips. So feel free to watch it at your own leisure. He's an OTC trader and he also trades smaller, smaller you know, penny stocks. So... He's good. Yeah, to have he around. trades everything. When yep. OTC is not active, he's on Nice. So, yep. a diverse trader. So, for sure. So, everybody have a good day. As I posted yeah, have in a the good video, night, everyone. As I posted here, we love stocks.